Hi everybody, Jim Sammons here for Kayak Fishing Tales. Once again, this week, we're bringing to you one of our live shows that we do over on our Facebook page every week. So on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons Facebook page, our weekly live show. And this is another one of those. And this week's, we've got Billy and EJ from Nakwa Adventure Gear telling us all about their awesome batteries, the ones I've been using for several years, and a lot of their accessories. They're gonna tell us all about these products. Stick around, I think you'll learn a lot. Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here from the Kayak Fishing Show Live. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us here. The Kayak Fishing Show Live, as always, brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Today we're drinking a Grunion. Uh, that's a really good pale ale, uh, a little hoppy but definitely one of my favorites. Um, so if you like really good beer and their IPAs, the Sculpin, of course, is awesome. You know, try out Ballast Point. Um, can't help thank them enough for always being a, a part here with us. So today on the show, I'm going to uh, bring up here onto the screen. I've got on top, there is Billy Rossini from... Um, from Nakwa Adventure Gear and EJ Coughlin. These guys are the men behind Nakwa. Uh, I'm gonna change this a little so we're more even there. Um, I really appreciate you guys being on here and you know how much I love this product and I've been a be behind this product since the first time. I mean, like I said, I was one of those guys using the big old 12 volt batteries that weighed 10 pounds and the first time I saw one of these things, and I've got some sitting on my desk here, I mean, I, I fell in love with them. I mean, to be able to do that <laughs> with a 10 amp battery it, it is quite a change. So thank you for joining me here today. Hey, thank you very much for having us. Uh, we're excited to be a part of the show and uh, we truly appreciate your support. Well, and, and you know, the feelings mutual have a, the mutual appreciation um, festival here because I mean, for me, you know, a company like you guys, a small company who has still put faith in our show and stands behind us, uh, you know, it, it's all that, um, you know, that partnership where we can all help each other grow. So I really appreciate that. Um, we got Joshua saying, what's up, Billy and EJ. Um, How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. And, and again, everybody, you know, we uh, appreciate the comments um, and the questions. If you have questions, particularly, these always make them better shows. Uh, the guys very nicely have offered to give away one of their, uh, actually, I've got a box here, <laughs> one of these uh, Pro Packs, um, the Pro Power Kit, the 10 amp. Uh, they've got another new item that they're going to give away today, which is their dual USB. And they've also got some, a hat we're going to give to somebody. So, but we need you guys to like, comment, share for your opportunity to win. So please, um, please share this comment, make this a good fun show for us. Um, uh, we, we've got a comment here already, uh, Somebody saying looking for more than a 10 amp hour. We will go over what you guys have got coming up. Um, let's see what else. Got. Those two guys have the answer to power to kayaks. Knock was a rock. I mean, like I said, I mean, yeah. anybody who's got one knows, right? Um, we got another one. Love my knock with batteries. Um, somebody also looking for a higher amp. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, Michael. Thanks for joining us there, man. So, again, you know, first off, you know, I, we've got an hour here. Uh, so, you know, I'd love to get some background um, on Nakwa Adventure Gear. You know, what kind of got you started into all this? And, you know, I, I remember back when I first saw them, I've actually got an old prototype of a sticker on it. This thing still works. I still That's use great. this battery. You know, so and this was an old prototype. So yeah, that yeah. I mean, that, that, great stuff. So, um, Billy, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it off to you. Maybe you can kind of give us a uh, a rundown of, of what got you started into this business and and um, getting going with Nakwa. 
Yeah, it was, uh, it's been an exciting ride. Uh, back in 2012, I had the idea, I was living in Key West, had the idea to illuminate a paddle board. Uh, I wanted to put some lights underneath it, enjoy the night, enjoy that experience. And about 200 prototypes later, we had a removable underwater lighting system, uh, rechargeable, compact, fits every board. That's funny, it, you know, I almost forgot about the, the lighting systems or where, where really where you started, right? Yeah, yeah, so went after that. Uh, we had the prototypes completely finished, um, almost went on Shark Tank is, it, to look for our partners at that particular time, uh, funding to get this whole thing off the ground. And I ended up landing a group of guys that are still with us today, support the whole business. And uh, from that point, from once we introduced the lighting that gave us a global reach and we started to receive quite a bit of feedback from uh, the lighting components and how they were being used. And we developed everything from scratch. So I was looking for a battery, a 12 volt battery that would, uh, that was waterproof, durable, compact, and it just wasn't out there. So we went ahead and, and developed our own for the lighting systems. And well, yeah, let me just interrupt really quickly. I mean, because again, back to my old sealed lead acid days, if anybody knows, even though that's a sealed lead acid battery, if anybody else out there, whoever used those in saltwater conditions, every one of us broke those tabs off or right. had them corrode off. Uh, not only the tabs, but then your connectors. I mean, it was always just kind of a, maybe a little bit of a hinky situation, right? Yes. And, and for you guys going then, hey, well, we're going to actually make these things so they're going to be really in the water. Yep. That I mean, that, that took some time to, to really develop that, right? It took some time to create the formula for the type of battery we were going to use because safety was our biggest concern, uh, making sure that it's reliable, that it can withstand the abuse of, uh, at that particular time, a tour operator using our lights and using the system every single night, that this thing had to be durable and tough. And once we had that sure. down pat and we had thousands of uh, tour, op or tour operators and customers using it, uh, we knew we had something on the battery side. And that's when we started to explore, you know, what other uses and what other categories could we potentially sell this battery in and open up different markets. And that's when kayak fishing came in and I was looking at everybody's rigs and uh, we started doing some testing on it. Obviously you still have the prototype. So uh, that's pretty cool to see that everything's still working. Um, and once we got the first pro power kit out there, the 4.4 amp hour, uh, it was, we had great feedback from it. You know, people loved it. Uh, we immediately, the response was, we need a bigger one. You know, we need right. additional amperage. So, uh, you know, those are things that we, were, uh, we take to heart. And our goal is to always be a company that can fast track that development based on the feedback we're getting from our customers. Well, and that's what I love about working with, with, I mean, everybody wants those really big sponsors. Uh, but I love working with small companies that are, can be so reactive to the market. You know, yeah. it, you're working with, you know, you work in those big, big companies. It takes forever to get anything done. It's but right. working with like, it's kind of similar with working with Siegler Reels. You know, it's like, Hey, you know, this isn't quite right. And they're like, okay, well, we'll fix it. You know, it's like, it gets yeah. done. And, and I've seen that with you guys. Yeah, well, we'll hear an idea and sketch it out on a napkin. It goes to a CAD designer, then to a 3D printer, and we can have functional prototypes within a couple of weeks and potentially go to production with something in a month or two months. So, you know, that's that's the goal. And it's been working. And I know we have quite a few happy customers out there uh, because of that. So, it's well, honestly, you know, one of my first introductions, um, you know, now thinking back about it, uh, to, to seeing your stuff was doing something with Jameson Redding. Yep. And, and he had a couple of the really early prototypes and, and then he had the lights and he was using the lighting outside of his trailer and his motorhome and such. <laughs> um, or we'd go somewhere and he was using those to light up our whole area. And it's like, well, those are cool. And he said, well, the lights are cool, but check out the batteries. <laughs> it's like, so that's what, that's really where, um, my introduction to him was. And, you know, like I said, it's just, for me, it, it's been, uh, I, I hate using the game changer statement because I, it, that's so overused, but 
it kind of is in this in this particular one because even guys who are coming up with other types of battery solutions, your guys just isn't the battery. I mean, let, I mean, let's honestly let's talk about that that Pro Power Kit. If somebody's going to be setting up a kayak, they get a Pro Power Kit, and they are set. I mean, to to rig up their kayak right now. Exactly. When um, when EJ and I looked at this this opportunity, I was looking at all the different batteries. So you could buy a battery, but then you had to go buy the connectors and then you had to buy a charger. And I thought, wow, you know, that's just I want everything all in one kit. And I think people would appreciate that if you had one kit that you could buy that had the heat shrink butt connectors and the shrink wrap or the shrink tubing and the uh, connecting cable. Uh, everything was in included and they were all quality products. And then you have a company that's going to stand behind it. So. It was once we packaged everything up, um, you know, it was it was a home run. Everybody, the feedback we've had is great. And, you know, we love our customers. And uh, it's just great to hear all the positive response we've had from uh, packaging everything up into one kit. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, being able to get that box and go, I don't have to now go to the marine store and buy some watertight butt connectors. Uh, I don't have to go buy some shrink tube. Um, I don't have to worry about my connections because the battery itself has the watertight connectors. I mean, yep. it, it is just so clean and just so sanitary, um, how that thing all goes together. Um, I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to put that back down and we'll, we'll, we'll bring EJ back into the conversation in case yeah. he has anything he wants to say, just cause I don't want to feel him, him feeling left out. <laughs> I didn't know that I wasn't part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were kind of down below. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Billy's the, pretty much covered everything. Just the, I mean, the span of things, uh, real, real basic on the, uh, the bottom line is it's a simple power source. Um, but kind of the storyline that we've always uh, referenced and gone back to is everything that led to the development of the battery has made it uh, perfect to really sustain the growth up to this point. One, it's simple. Two, it just works. And then three, all those really, really minor characteristics, like it being durable, very, very lightweight, easily charged. I mean, you were saying you didn't have to go out to a marine store to find the connectors or the uh, uh, the heat shrink tubing, even just the charger is there. Oh, in yeah, the exactly. I didn't even mention that. I mean, into the wall. Right. I mean, I always had, with the, with, again, with those 12 volt, 12 amps, you had to have that separate charger with fairly fairly bulky and yep. not always reliable. And yours is basically like, you know, a phone charger, right? That same plug. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I don't know if we've gotten it out to you yet, but we, another one of those listening to the customer points is a two amp hour charger. So originally we had the one amp, putting one amp back into the battery per hour. And the newest one uh, was shipping, I think November of last year, we started shipping those standard and all kits as a two amp charger. So it puts two amps back into the battery per hour. Our 10 amp hour battery is going to charge anywhere between four and a half to six hours. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm going to show, uh, we have a couple of comments here. We'll throw them up there. Um, Andrew is saying, uh, you know, cold is a big part where their batteries, uh, and it doesn't seem to affect your batteries. Um, being in that cold, which can affect a, an SLA. Yeah. Part, uh, part of the chemical makeup uh, in the battery. So you can set those parameters beforehand uh, to get the most efficiency out of both heat, you know, and cold. Uh, so we wanted the biggest window possible, but always making sure that we fall within a safe tolerance, um, you know, to achieve that widest range in temperature temperature range. I gotcha. Uh, Joey Pruitt has a, a question about uh, charging cycles. Um, I don't know, about six million, something like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we we have it stated at 500, but it, it there we have batteries in use from when we were testing things in 2011. I mean, that battery right there is <laughs> the old. So uh, we say 500, but I guarantee you're going to get a lot more out of it. Oh, that's yep. cool. Um, somebody used it used it for for charging their phone, and we'll we'll talk about some of the accessories you have here in a minute. 
So people can do that very, very easily. Um, what other questions do we have here? One other thing I, I just wanted to mention quickly while we're just talking about the technical specs on the battery is it's a smart battery. So we integrated a chip inside the uh, circuit board, inside the battery that monitors every single cell. And it also monitors the output and the input. And where that's incredibly important is if you were to drop a live lead into the water or you have an overcharge or something just out of the norm happens, that circuit board is designed to cause an internal reset on the battery or cause the battery to just shut down uh, before you have anything else that could potentially happen out of it. And part of that safety factor, that's just something that we were adamant about on the development of the entire uh, project. And that's just something that's hidden. You would never see it. So I just felt like this is a good platform to at least talk to some people about it. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something nobody ever knows. So if I if I had my battery here and I just drop my, because sometimes I'll have a spare battery down inside my my kayak. Yeah. So if, I, if that falls into the salt water, I'm not going to have to worry about any issues. That's what the circuit board is designed for. Obviously, we we don't recommend it, but oh, it's of course, there. of course, it's right. There. You want to be, take care of that, correct? And of course, you've got some stuff to handle that as well, and we'll talk about that as well. Yeah. So, um, I know there was another question. Oh, um, somebody asked about uh, what kind of lithium do you use for your batteries, lipos? I don't even know the difference between lipos versus lifees and, and that. I'm sure you do. EJ? Oh, okay. So uh, the answer to that is we don't use either. It's a lithium ion. Uh, lipo is a lithium phosphate, L-I-F-E, that's lithium iron. Uh, those kind of fall into the lithium metal category. The lithium ion is uh, definitely going to be on the safer side of things. That's what your laptop or your cell phone is being used. Um, it's it's a better all around battery. Uh, it's a lot easier to maintain. Uh, it takes a lot less to maintain it as well, but it's going to hold up to a lot of abuse. It's going to uh, hold up to a lot of charges. Uh, and it's also perfect for just this application, which is very low draw very consistent draw uh, applications, which is perfect. Right. Um, it's actually funny as I remember um, when I first started seeing lithium ion batteries, uh, there was some stuff out of China that we were able to get our hands on. They were okay for running the fish finder, but then they didn't have the actual oomph to power my bait tank. Sure. You know, they, wouldn't, they would not turn that pump and keep it going. Um, and again, I've never had that kind of issue with your guys' batteries. Yeah, it's, it's, there are so many, uh, different makeups in the battery and we have other chemicals involved, uh, that help with getting that kick and also keeping it safe at the same time. So, um, I'm great that, uh, happy to know that that worked for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Sean Russell has a question here asking, Anything new coming out with camera or phone ports? So uh, part of, we've considered or looked at a variety of different things we could potentially add to the battery itself. And it always circles back to the battery is simple and it works. And it when you start adding other uh, potential ports or lights or anything like that to it, it just starts to complicate things. So that's where we offer those as accessories that attach to the battery. Then it's up to the consumer. We can shape it to your specific needs. And the battery is always simple, small, and durable, and it works. So yeah. to answer your question, you know, our USB port is probably the, the best answer to that because it'll drive a GoPro and, and other things. We can talk about that later. But, um, you know, we're, we're getting there and we're always listening. So if you need something specific, just keep hammering on us. Uh, here's a, a nice comment. Anyway, from Zachariah Cliff, uh, the Nakua is legit best battery I've used, hands down. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the thing is there's there's so many t testimonials like that out there um, that I have seen. Um, you know, when I've ever turned anybody on to these batteries, 
all of a sudden they're selling them all to their friends. You know, they're, they're selling their friends on them, I should say. Um, because it is just a, a like I said, I think that's a, a huge part of it. Just it, it's so simple. Um, yeah. And then the accessories, I think, you know, having that as a separate thing is, is really cool. Now, the bat, what, what, let, let's talk about the battery itself. I mean, what besides the power of it, um, what makes it so great for us water sports guys? I mean, when, you, you know, you look at the, it starts at the makeup of the battery, what type of cell, what we're putting inside of it to get it to where it's going to perform and uh, perform every day for you and be, you know, incredibly consistent. Uh, from that point, we looked at, well, what type of abuse is it going to take? What are, what are our customers, what are they going to need? So sealing it in a silicone case uh, that's 100% sealed was the next step as uh, protection. And then outside of that, we use a padded ballistic nylon sleeve that encases everything that gives you the ability. So it adds another layer of protection. Uh, right. It also gives us some marketing capability on it or branding. Um, right, right, of course. We put that tongue, that long tongue on it to, that allows you to, uh, you had an image up earlier where it was attached uh, to some of your rigging. And yeah, that's I can uh, I'll show that again right there. That's um, exactly why we put that tongue on there to allow the user to just put that thing, if you want to, have it on a rail if you want to hook it to your backpack and take it camping, use it for camping or there's just such a wide range. So, you know, that well, I, I saw um, uh, just the other day, somebody posted on Facebook for a, you know, a different kayak brand, but they had a tray or something that the battery, the, that long tongue, as you say, was kind of looped through. So it gave it, it was a mounting point up underneath a tray or something. Um, like you said, it, it does make it really. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right? laughs> I, I knew I saw that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, those are pretty cool. That's from a company called uh, Viking Concealment. It's a Kydex plate. Uh, the folks over there make holsters for uh, concealed carry uh, pistols. So kind of that exact same technology moved over to uh, putting batteries in the kayak caches. And you're able to loop two of our batteries in there and uh, just keep them up out of the water if you want to do it that way, but also make use of a uh, of the top part of the hatch, where if you've got all your gear underneath, you're able to still keep that battery up and out. Right. I would use mine in, in, uh, in my kayak. I had some... Uh... Underneath my hatch, I have some uh, bungee cord running. And I would just loop them on there, and so they're hanging underneath there yep. as well. So it's just like I said, just a, a great way to keep them off the floor of the kayak. Yep. Uh, so you know, even though, like you said, they're all watertight and all that, you still I just try to keep them out of the water as much as possible. Um, and just that little little things. I mean, it's always little things. I mean, the connector here. Um, I mean, I was so used to having the two tabs, having to put them on the two tabs of the battery, mm -hmm. and invariably the salt water would leach up those um, those cables, and they would, you know, your tabs are breaking off, your connectors are breaking off, uh, the wire just gets all corroded. Um, I mean, this, and I'm getting it back in front of the camera, um, that watertight connector right there keeping everything so clean and not having to worry about that corrosion so much it is so huge. Yeah, it's a, it's a great connector. It's durable. It works. And the reason we actually chose that style connector in the very beginning was for the light system. My fear was someone would put the battery on top of their board using the lights underneath, flip the board over. And if it was a, just a traditional plug, potentially losing the battery. So oh, I right. we need a, a waterproof screw connection system that is a safety tether as long as along with being the connector. So oh, that, that totally makes ball. sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, no, that no, totally makes yeah. sense. So you have watertight and you're not dropping it off the side. Exactly. Exactly. Um, we got another comment here. He stores mines right inside the forward hatch. You know, like I said, <laughs> another great <laughs> testimonial there, you know, um, just such cool stuff. Um, somebody actually commented, where can I get an aqua hat? Huh. 
Looks like we might have a, a few here for today. So we're gonna get we're gonna be giving away a hat or two here at the end of this thing. And of course, if somebody wants to find one, you guys have swag on your site. Yep. 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 Everything's available on the site, and we have uh, three hats here for some uh, happy viewers today. So oh, that is that is awesome. Oh, and I did want to mention um, you guys have offered to give some Nakwa stickers away. I put the link in the description of the video. So if anybody is interested in a Nakwa sticker yep. uh, put on your kayak. You just click on that link and these guys are going to take care of you. Um, Justin says, ooh, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> that um, is only going to be good for probably another 24 hours. We've tried having a free sticker page on the website before, but unfortunately it gets used and abused. You wouldn't believe how many free sticker uh, websites there are out there where people just post those up and you get people, I get 50 a day where somebody is just asking for a free sticker out of the blue. You know what I used to do actually um, when I was doing a lot more guiding, uh, I had some pretty cool stickers. Um, I wonder if I even have an old one around here. But anyway, so I would, I would say, hey, you know, I'm paying for the sticker. You send me an envelope with a stamp. Oh, there you go. That's a good idea. <laughs> if you want a sticker, I'm happy to send you a sticker, but you got to yeah. send me a self-addressed envelope with a stamp on it. Right. And, and, and that. Uh, yeah, that, that worked out really well. I, you know, I gave away a lot of stickers, but I wasn't paying the addition of having to do the post. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can make um, <laughs> There's Weiss. Uh, Weiss actually won, uh, during our show, won a uh, Raymarine Dragonfly. So I imagine he's now using the Dragonfly or using the, the Nakwa to power his Dragonfly. Um, it says uh, he stores it and it's always in water. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, it, it, it does do that, but um, we always try to uh, take try, care try of it. Keep them dry, but uh, you know, we we set them up to withstand some abuse. So, well, yeah, I mean, they're they're coated in silicone, right? Yeah. Um, my only the reason, uh, probably probably the main reason I try to keep mine dry is because the case itself, the outside case, then takes a while to dry. That's yep. you know, where the silicone doesn't, the, this takes a little while to dry. So I, I just try not to have it rolling around in the bottom of my kayak. Yeah. Um, the double-edged sword with a padded case is it can absorb some water, uh, which does take a little bit to dry. So yeah, I think you're, you're doing a great job. <laughs> uh, Daniel up in Edmonton watching the show. Daniel, uh, watches these things every week as well. So, yeah, you know, I, I do really appreciate everyone who does join these shows every week. It, it makes it a lot more fun. So, you know, if you're giving us a thumbs up, we're giving you a thumbs up right back. Back at uh, you. <laughs> um, so I, I know we wanted to talk about some other stuff, The particularly um, besides the pro power kits, you guys have these, these new accessories and, and um, EJ, I'm going to drop you down again just so I've got a little bit more room on the screen. Um, and because you've got some really, really cool accessories, there's the, the shot of. Uh, so I don't know if you have any order you want to go through and talk about some stuff. Uh, I know this is a great new product right here. Yeah. Let's go um, right through it. I don't know why that went solo. Okay, so there you have the dual USB. Yeah, so we um, we knew that a USB was going to be an important element or an important accessory to expand on the battery's capabilities. There's no doubt we all have our cell phone and a GoPro or anything else that you need uh, powered by uh, USB output. So we introduced a single USB uh, a while back and everyone loved it. It works great. I'm going to put you solo up there right now so you can show that a little bit better. All right. So we had the US, the single USB. People loved it. Works great. It has a silicone cover to it. Plugs right in, right to the battery. And the feedback we were getting is we love it, but um, I would like two outputs and maybe a little more power out of one of the outputs. So if I wanted to charge a tablet or your iPad, so and that requires two different voltages, even though your phone can accept both voltages. So you can do a quick charge on a phone with a two amp output 
and a longer kind of a, a more dense charge with a one amp output. Uh, so we offer both of those with the new USB. So it's listening to our, our customers and we introduced this new guy, which you have up on your screen and I'll, sure, I'll, I'll put you back up there so you can show it a little bit better. There you go. So the new dual has a silicone cover to it. So these go right inside to help protect that. And I have this one plugged in right now. You can see it glowing green. That green is, is a direct relation to how much power is remaining in your battery. So this changes colors as your battery goes down in increments of 25%. Or roughly. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up an image of that. I've got one of those right here so people yeah. can, uh, can see that. Yeah. Um, so just d depending on the, the color of the LED is how much battery you have left. Yep. So just quickly looking at it, you can, you get a, a good idea of how much power is remaining in your battery pack. So it's a good, uh, indicator of that. And we also have the two, uh, outputs. And then the other thing was people were saying, well, we want to keep it small, but I would like to be able to hard mount my USB into a flat surface. So we went ahead and put threads on it, on the outer body and a plastic locking nut. So this nut here allows you to just drill a one inch hole, uh, then just drop this in, run the nut up behind it. And now you have a surface mount dual USB output uh, that's, connects right to the battery, piece of cake. Uh, that, that's really sweet. Of course, my question's gotta be this. I mean, everything is so waterproof, watertight. Uh, how is that part gonna do uh, as far as water and particularly salt water and, you know? Yeah, we recommend to keep this in somewhat of a protected or uh, sheltered space. Uh, we do coat all of our coat, all of our electronics with a, um, a well, it's a product that we'll talk about in a little bit, the uh, anti-corrosion uh, kit. But, you know, salt water and electronics, it's just, it's difficult to say, hey, this is going to hold up 100%. But right, for we do sure. our best. And, you know, we recommend that you just put this inside of a hatch or somewhere that isn't going to take a ton of abuse, but it's there when you need it. Plus, if you're plugged into your phone, typically you wouldn't have that out in those conditions, it, making that connection anyway. So, uh, but we wanted to offer something that added a little more flexibility and uh, it's another product that works really well and we think people will like it. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's always, like I said, with that, I said, I know everything that gets to that is watertight. It's just always, my only fear is, is how well is that gonna hold up? And uh, since we did bring it up, um, let me see if I can, uh, I'm going to bring this one up here. And so now, now you've got that um, corrosion protection kit. Yeah. I'll let, so let's switch this one over to EJ because he's the, he's the man on this project. Okay. I'm going to bring EJ up then. I'll take one second. And, oops, EJ, we got you back up there for uh, a second here, and and um, you can kind of talk about it. Then I'll I'll bring this back up onto the screen as well. All right, cool. So, uh, pretty much the the origin of the corrosion preventative kit. Uh, we know that the battery is durable. We know that it takes abuse and it takes a beating. But the terminals, the battery terminals that are not replaceable, so this is wired directly into the battery. If these guys go, the battery is pretty much done. Um, the goal is to protect this at all costs, and if it's being used, no water is going to really affect it. Um, but when it's not used, you know, the, the times that are going to be uh, the most damaging are, are when you're not paying attention. So... Uh, kind of stealing the idea from the boating industry, the we've got what's called a sacrificial uh, connector, which is this guy right here in a bag, uh, sacrificial adapter, where it's kind of similar to the sacrificial anode that you put on your engine prop, uh, like a zinc block where corrosion is going to eat that first and save your engine. Um, so the idea is you put this adapter onto your battery terminal, 
if and when corrosion does affect this, you can just pop it off, put a new one on. This guy stays clean. Uh, so that is, I mean, going to be the best option. It's a very inexpensive option. It's going to save your battery if you are in salt water for a uh, for a huge amount of time. The so next, there's a picture of the kit right there. Yep. Yep. And so, uh, then the other two items that are in there, one's a protective cap that just sits over the top of your sacrificial connector, and another is a half-ounce dropper bottle of uh, Nano Pro corrosion anti-corrosion spray. Uh, it's a super cool product. It's a nanoparticle product where it actually gets into the really, really, really small, uh, small grooves of the metal. Uh, on a nanoparticle level. And the way that we found these guys, Billy was actually at a trade show in Las Vegas. And uh, these guys were using an electric drill in a small fish tank. So just a really visual way to say, hey, this stuff really works. Um, so we've got a half ounce dropper bottle on there. And just as a kit, those three items are going to be the best option to protect and preserve your, uh, protect and preserve your battery terminals. And this was something I was thinking also, uh, you know, because I was thinking of like dielectric grease. Um, yeah. Is this a better option than that? Uh, I don't know if it's better. It's uh, something that we use more frequently. Dielectric grease can definitely gunk up a lot of different things and uh, it's, it's, they can get everywhere. Um, this is a very small, just a little bit of a drop and you're good to go. It's going to stay on there for, I think, uh, two and a half, three months, something like that. You're, uh, you're going to be safe. Okay. All of a sudden, my dogs are barking here. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's wondering, I have four dogs, so all right, they they, inter they uh, interfere in a show from time to time. <laughs> um, so I'm going to drop that back down and uh, put us all back on screen. Um, let's see. Uh, here's another interesting question. Uh, you guys, plan to allow paralleling two 10 amp hour power kits? <laughs> where uh, the the response we're getting on the 10 app is people love it and they they're looking for more power uh, more power more, yeah, more power um we're looking at a variety of options right now the biggest thing is making sure that we maintain um our core which is a compact uh reliable battery and once we if we introduce something that's that's larger, you start to lose that element of being able to pop it out of your kayak, throw it in your backpack, or use it for a variety of things. So it's on the drawing board. We're just looking at various capacities and the pros and cons with that. And it kind of takes us into a new category when you start to get above 10 amp uh, with, with battery power, but we're definitely looking into it and we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, you know what? I just carry two batteries. Yeah, you know, I, I've always got it. I've always got a just in case battery. I also, although I, I mean, I love the the splitter you guys have, so I can I can power two lower draw items mm -hmm. using it one battery in the splitter, um, and then uh, but on my kayak normally I just have one battery for my bait tank and then one for my um, my fish finder, and yep. I've got power coming out of my ears. <laughs> you know. And uh, something we also encourage uh, customers to use, it's another carryover from our lighting system, the inline switch uh, that has a battery indicator reserve. So if you're, uh, if you're powering a really high draw device, a really high, you know, nine inch uh, Raymarine Dragonfly, um, and you want to know exactly when to switch over that battery, the inline switch not only is going to give you an option for turning the battery on and off, but it'll be glowing uh, green, if there's 100%, 75% battery, 50 uh, blue for 75 to 50, then once it starts blinking red, you know that you're at that verge of 25 to 0% battery. So you pop that battery off, put a new one charged up, and you're good to go. Gotcha. That's also a great item um, that I use for when I'm, I, I like, I'll have a portable bait tank set up. Yep. Um, so that way, uh, it's really easy. I don't have a, a wired in switch on my kayak um, like I do with my for my home boat. But when I'm traveling, I can bring that bait tank, and it's such a an easy thing to throw together. You know, just put in that that inline switch. Um, it also has a, like a timer switch on it. Um, uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it does SOS. It does SOS. <laughs> 
<laughs> but but you know you're gonna I get a little bit uh, a little bit more life that way. I don't need yeah. you know as much flow from the battery. Um, there was a question here, and it scrolled by because we are getting a lot of good questions. Um, yeah. I've been keeping track of those. They've been looking good. So, what is the max amount draw of the 10 amp hour? EJ, you wanna? Ah, uh, well, it's really gonna depend. Uh, so the, the question I'm uh, reading into it a bit is how long will it power a device? Um, and the basic math there is you take the capacity of the battery and you divide that by the draw of the device. So the easy math is if you've got a 10 amp hour battery and your device is pulling one amp per hour, you're going to get roughly 10 hours worth of power out of that battery. Right. Uh, and I, know, I mean, what is the, uh, the generally speaking, like a, uh, a dragonfly? Do you know what kind of draw they have? Just so you have a general idea? It depends. I mean, you can, uh, depending what bells and whistles you've got turned on at the time, what the resolution's like, what the brightness level is like. Well, and that's um, a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. So people don't seem to realize is bring down your brightness a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna and your battery's gonna last a lot longer. That's why I use the uh, the Burley Pro Shields on mine. Oh, sure, that. sure. You know, so it's just got that little bit of shade. Um, I don't have to have my screen nearly as bright. And my, I get a lot more life out of my battery. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys will have it way up there and have it just cranked up bright. And yeah, it could, especially some of these big, you know, seven inch screens, they're gonna they're gonna draw it down that much faster. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a tough one to to answer. You know, when when people ask, "What am I going to get life wise out of a, a battery?" and it just there's so many variables in it. Uh, we can give them a good estimated guess, but that's why it's good to just have two batteries. Right, right. Well, and I always tell people it's kind of like uh, with the trolling motors. Um, you just have diminishing returns. You know, I can go at one and a half miles an hour all day long. But if I want to go full speed, I'm going to go for an hour. Yeah. You know, it's just the the faster you want to go, you know, like I said, the brighter the lights, the, the faster you're going to draw that battery. So we've got a question here from Justin. Um, are the US the dual USB ports available for retailers? Yeah. So Justin, Justin's from Fuzzy Guppies up in New York. Uh, we've actually just released the dual USB uh, when we first started talking about it with Jim. Uh, so be on the lookout for some new wholesale and dealer information in the next coming days. It's live on the website for anybody that wants to pick it up. Uh, but we've got them in stock. We're ready to ship and uh, ready for you guys to stock them on your shelf. That's awesome. I appreciate you guys kind of introducing them here Yeah, yeah. On, on the show. That's very cool. Um, need a tw- I'm not sure where it would need a 12 volt car charger. Yep, we've uh, we've heard that one, um, and it's it's an adapter that has been in the works. We're just it's one of those things that kind of depends on the demand. And what we would recommend is just plugging the uh, charger into an inverter uh, for the time being. If you have one, but we are looking at the biggest thing. It just comes down to safety, making sure we can safely recharge this type of battery. Um, and there's smart technology that goes even into our wall charger. So uh, when you plug it into a car, we just want to make sure that those uh, safety precautions are, are in place when we introduce uh, a new adapter like that. Gotcha. And I'd love to see, you know, comments like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Well, Daniel's saying a dragonfly at full brightness is 0.5. I think it's more like 1.5. I can't believe it, it's 0.5 at full brightness. Well, it depends on the screen size a bit. Yeah, maybe. Maybe one of the fours. Yeah. I, I've always used the bigger ones. So. <laughs> uh, Martin is saying um, 0.78 to 0.81 on the Garmin. He uses the Burley Pro cover as well. Like I said, those Burley Pro, Pro, Pro covers are just, I mean, they protect your fish finder. They, you know, just keep a little bit of the splashing off of it, but that little bit of extra shade so you can power it down a little bit. It, it increases that life so much. Yeah, um, and the splashing you're receiving is going right to the connectors, uh, both on the unit itself and to, you know, potentially the battery uh, connectors. So I'm sure shielding that. Um, in itself is is a nice precautionary unit to have. 
Yeah. Um, Daniel's also saying the Axiom is 0. 0.75, 0. 0.3. So maybe I was wrong. I thought they were a higher draw than that. Um, and I use them all the time. Um, let's see. Good guys are actually having conversations in here. Um, <laughs> someone saying, yeah, I use the inverter um, and extra car battery in the back. Yeah, that's that's a great way to do it. And, and that's kind of what I have in my, uh, in my van. Um, I've actually got one on my, my trailer as well. Um, oh, nice. Uh, Chris is saying that, uh, he's putting the, uh, 10 amp on his birthday wish list. Chris, is you, is it your birthday today? Um, my birthday's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, make sure that he like hits the like button, and uh, he might end up with one. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you uh, like, comment, share. You know, um, and you know, you get on that that chance to to win some of this stuff. Because like I said we, these guys are very generously giving away some free stuff. And again, if you are looking for, maybe just want one of their knock with stickers. Again, that we they, we have the link up in the description of the video, so you can click on that link and uh, get your knock with adventure gear. Sticker quality sticker UV protected won't fall apart on you. You know we're always making sure you get quality stuff out the door. <laughs> Speaking of charging real quick, just while we're on that topic, uh, one of our accessories is we partnered with Goal Zero uh, a few years ago, and we offer a an, an adapter for our battery to charge off of Goal Zero panels. So if you're running two batteries and you run one down, you and you have a Goal Zero panel. You can get our adapter and charge while you're out there. Um, it was, uh, you know, is that what I've got up on the screen right there? Uh, that, that is a no, zero. that's actually a Chris Funk, uh, Chris Funk install. He wired a female receptacle, like a cigarette, uh, cigarette charger, uh, in with our component pack. So he was then able to plug in a bunch of different accessories. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't okay. know if I sent you any Gold Zero info. Yeah, it's a simple adapter, um, low cost, and if you have the panel, they work. They work great, and the newer Goal Zero panels are very impressive. I accidentally dropped you out of the. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Technical <laughs> difficulties here, um, and Ryan is saying, "Great product, two ten amps with the splitter is the way to go." Um, nice. Yeah. I, with the splitter, I said, I, you know, powering a couple of different items at the same time off one battery, particularly again, those lower draw items. Um, what's the most, I mean, you guys started out, did you start out with the four amp? Yes. Yep. yep. So uh, has the 10 amp passed that up in popularity? You do still have both batteries, right? We still have both, but the 10 amp is is just far superior to the 4.4. Um, you know, when you look at the output ratio to the size and weight difference, um, it's just, it's not that much bigger. There's not that much more weight to it. And there's more than twice the capacity. Uh, Here's so. a four. So I'm actually going to go solo by myself here so I can show these. Yeah. Um, so there's the four and there's the 10. I mean, there, there's not a whole lot of difference. A um, little bit taller you know, a little bit wider, but, you know, weight isn't a huge difference. I mean, it, it just, to me, you know, makes sense to jump up to that, that 10, it particularly, particularly when you, you are draw, you know, like I said, the bait tank, uh, yeah. those draw quite a bit more, you know, cause you're running that pump all day. Um, so having that, that 10 is perfect, but I mean, I bet, I mean, I used the four for quite a while and, and, um, they would, they'd run my fish finder, quite a while. I mean, I don't know that most of my days tend to be about six, seven hours. And I, I pretty much could run that my fish finder that long. So even the four is not bad. And, and again, you know, nice and light. So yeah, yeah, the, it's, it's lighter, a little bit smaller. It's a great battery has all the same technology. Um, but the 10's definitely been outselling the four. Like, uh, Justin saying he uses the four for his lighting system. Yep. I assume the lighting systems, I mean, they're, they're pretty low draw. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, when we arrived at 4.4 hours, it was, or 4.4 amp, it was 
off of the light output, the lumen output from our light bars. And we knew that if we we're going to run uh, 2000 lumens, I wanted that to last for two and a half to maybe three and a half hours. Um, so that 4.4 amp was a perfect size battery for that, that capacity. And it just so happened to be another great application for fish finders. But, uh, you know, when you have the 10, it's, it's just nice. You have quite a, quite a bit of backup. And if, like you said, when you're running with a splitter with our Y connector and you might be charging your GoPro or your phone at the same time, you have plenty of juice, uh, to be out there all day. Uh, Mark saying he loves the Nakua lights and he uses for bow fishing. Yeah, um, I want to go do that. That sounds. Uh, <laughs> what do you bow fish for? Like carp, right? Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, it would be carp, gar, maybe catfish. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I could do it. I've, I've tried I, it. I did some archery with my kids. My son was like freaking Robin Hood, and <laughs> I, I, I was so bad at it. <laughs> and, and then you add in that whole refraction, you know, with the fish. I, I, I don't think I could hit a thing. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say when I went out and tried it, most of the fish were safe that night. <laughs> yeah. worry about me hitting them with an arrow. <laughs> um, so Dusty says he needs a 10. It looks like it, it's half of the size of the fish finder battery. Well, if you're using a, a sealed lead acid or, or people always say, oh, is it a motorcycle battery that we use on the kayaks? Like, well, no, not really. You know, you have these there's sealed lead acid, but um, those batteries are big and they're heavy. Um, so it, it, it was a no brainer to me when these things came out. It's like, wow, I just eliminated eight pounds of extra <laughs> gear off my kayak. That's um, more room in the cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just, you know, moving your kayak, you know, to the vehicle, you mm -hmm. know, or dragging it across the sand. I mean, that stuff just gets every pound starts to count. And kayaks yeah. certainly haven't gotten any lighter over the years. <laughs> it's I mean, it, it, it's actually kind of funny because, um, you know, off the battery track. But when I um, kind of got into kayak fishing, um a hundred years ago, you know, back with it. And then when the scupper pros, when we were really starting to push things with the scupper pro and that boat weighed around 50 pounds. And, but people were like, Oh, this thing's really awesome. I, I, I wish they could make it lighter and God, what I would give. Perfect. To have a 50 pound kayak now. <laughs> because now they're like minimum 75 pounds. You yeah. know, when you get into these, you know, offshore boats and these big, you know, what, like those Hobie Pro Anglers are like 135 pounds. Wow. I mean, it's just like, there's just so much weight. So if you can just shave a few pounds, you know, yeah, why says, if you can shave it when you're getting older and yes, I'm getting older. Like I said, as of tomorrow, I will be 56 years old. So, um, I, I, I want to shave as much weight off of, um, my kayak and what I have to pick up and lug around as possible. That's why I went with a Malone trailer. So I no longer have to, you know, huff all my stuff up on top of my, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, was there, you guys have any other, um, did, I, or did we miss anything as far as the accessories? Um, I want to make sure that we everybody knows what you got to offer. So what we just released today, and this was, uh, it, it was good that we had the Facebook show or the, uh, the live show today because it actually gave me a deadline to get things on the website because one of the, uh, being in such a small company, it's very, very good for, like Billy was saying, how quick we can move on things. But when it comes to deadlines, <laughs> managing everything that we need to do to run this company. Uh, the to-do list ends up getting longer by the end of the day than when it started. Uh, <laughs> so using this as a uh, good deadline to launch some new stuff, pulling up the website right now. So we've got the dual port USB. Um, we talked about the corrosion preventative kit. We talked about the Viking concealment kayak hatch plates. Um, we talked about the two amp hour charger that's come in stock in all of our pro power kits now. Uh, some smaller stuff. Can somebody Not buy that charger separately? 
Yeah, you can buy it yeah. separately if you want to. Okay. Yeah, it's on the website. It's uh, tucked in there a little bit. It's on the same product listing page as the original one amp charger, so it's just an option to, to pick. Um, then we've got two items. They're not the sexiest of products, but there is a cap pack where you can get a male cap and a female cap for your pro power kit to keep your terminals safe when they're not in use. Uh, and then a super cool thing, again, not the sexiest, but it's uh, the plug and play cables. So if you're looking to customize your install a little bit, so you're using those uh, Viking kayak hatch plates in the back hatch, and you want to run power from your back hatch all the way to the front where you've got your fish binder or your uh, cell phone charger, we've got two foot, six foot, and 12 foot cables. Oh, that uh, so you're is You're able to awesome. put the cable down into the boat or just run it along the gutter, whatever you need to be doing. Uh, so again, not the sexiest, <laughs> but things work. Well, that and, makes a big difference. I mean, there, you know, oh, sometimes you want that battery back at the back of your kayak and your fish finders up at the front. I mean, yep. that's that's really sweet. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm excited about that one. So those are available. Again, two foot, six foot, 12 foot. Um, and then we've got a six pack kit of the sacrificial adapters with a male cap on there to go hand in hand with the corrosion preventative kit. Um but aside from that, I mean, we're, we're still plugging away with the stuff that we, uh, the high sellers that we have. We've got the inline switch we talked about and then the Y connectors. Uh, I mean, simple things like the Y connectors. I know, Jim, you're saying you use them with the bait tank and, the, uh, and your fish finder. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yay for cables. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's simple. It keeps the battery simple, and then it gives it puts it in the, the capabilities and the expansion of this whole system in the hands of the users. So you know, just continually keep giving us that feedback of what you like, uh, what you want, and we'll you know we take it to heart and we put it on the whiteboard and we try to get it done. We do our best effort to make that happen. Like I said, and that's why I love working with you guys and 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 other small companies like you. I mean, like I said you can react so quickly and if it makes sense you know everything's got to make sense right you gotta you gotta pencil in the numbers you know just because i want it doesn't mean a hundred thousand other people are going to want it but if it makes sense yep. you can do it exactly you know that's and I, that's a keeps it fun you know that's yeah martin had a question here real quick uh is the viking kit size for a specific size kayak round hatch so the current uh there's two out from Viking right now, there's one for the eight and a half inch uh, hatch that Hobie has, and then there's a uh, I forget exactly what the name of it is, but the Wilderness Systems. I think it's the Orbix. I want to say the Wilderness System Orbic hatch. Uh, so those are the two that are available, and both of those uh, they've got two size hat, uh, size holes for uh, for batteries. Uh, I know some Jackson kayaks are coming next down the chute for Viking, so be on the lookout for those. Okay, so here's another, um, we're going to rip through a couple of questions here before our time's up. Uh, U.S. Bar B chargers still come with the cover? Yep. Uh, Both the single and the double. Uh, the double has a nice logo on it. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, um, yeah uh, on the higher output charger. God, all yep. of a sudden these questions, just people are like nailing us. Uh, <laughs> If I flush mount it, can I still cover it up? Yep. Yeah, that uh, the the cover goes on there pretty tight, so it's uh, uh, you're going to be mounted just like that, and the cover is going to go right on top. Okay. Yeah, the 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 part of the USB that's actually sticking out uh, outside of the hole is probably just a hair over eighth of an inch, so that it's yep. a small footprint you know, a one inch diameter by maybe an eighth of an inch sticking out. That's not much for, uh, we try to recess as much as possible on the component to keep your system as smooth and flush as possible. Uh, again, we, I mean, will it last through a whole tourney? Um, uh, again, that depends on, on the, the, how bright you have your screen and, you know, what all you have going on, you know, are you on your phone the whole time, right? On, on how long that thing's going to work, how long it's going to last. But um, like I said, the, the fish finders don't draw that much. The 10 amp hour, um, I mean, I would say it would last all day, but. I would think yeah. so. Depends I on. Still, I still like, I always keep a spare. You know, I always have a spare in my kayak just in case, just in case, you know, 
something goes sideways or, uh, you know, again, I forgot to charge it or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, actually, and that's a question on, uh, on these batteries. You know, do, do they need to be kept fully charged? Do you, um, if I, if I use it for a couple of hours, should I come home and char recharge it the rest of the way back up? Or do you need to drain them down? I mean, there used to be memory in batteries and all that. Yeah. Is that an issue? No, it's, it's not an issue. We'd recommend that you charge it. Uh, once you see the light, there's a light indicator on the charging plug itself that goes from red to green. Once it hits green, your battery is fully charged. You can unplug it and it's fine. You can leave it like that. Wouldn't hurt to maybe just touch it up a little bit but right before you go. If it's an extended period of time, period of time uh, between charging. But other than that, they are, they're smart. The memory isn't going to affect the battery. You can drain it all the way out. There isn't going to be a problem because in that circuit board we talked about earlier, it will not allow the battery to actually fully discharge. There's always some power still remaining in it. Um, oh, okay. Okay. That helps keep it safe. Yeah. Uh, Scott saying he's running two SLAs in his uh, PA. If you're running two SLAs, <laughs> you would love these things because that's yeah. I mean, yeah. I said, those things are like eight pounds each. Um, so big difference. Wow. I just, there, yeah, you know what, you know, we've been on for an hour and it was, it's kind of wrapping it up. Maybe, maybe you guys can come back and look at some of these questions and answer them, you know, uh, and, and type in an answer to them. Cause I don't want to keep you guys here all day talking. And, um, although, you know, it's always easy to talk about anything to do with kayak fishing, but I know people have uh, places to go and, uh, I really can't thank you guys enough for being here. And um, let me get this comment off of there. Uh, if somebody wants to take a look at your stuff online, what's what, you know what's the website address so somebody can come and check it out and Nakwa.com. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, <laughs> uh, nocqua.com and uh, come check it out. I uh, can give uh, big props to EJ. He built that entire website, which was a, a, a miracle feat. So uh, hats off to him for, for doing that. Um, has all the products up there, all of our new stuff. And we're really excited to uh, just keep releasing these cool accessories, cool products, and have guys like Jim out on the water showcasing it for us. Well, yeah, it's it's my pleasure. And like I said, we, we always love the stuff and, and I really appreciate you being here. And of course, offering up the swag to our uh, participants here. Um, I'll be, uh, as always, I'll be plugging in all the comments into a randomizer after the show's done. And then I'll announce the, the winners of the gear. And then I will forward those over to you guys so you can just ship directly to them if that works for you. Sounds good. Um, I, I want, can't thank you enough again. I'm going to drop you guys both off of here and just wrap this thing up. Um, again, I really appreciate this. This flew by. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're an hour and three minutes right now and it just flew by. So thanks again, guys. And, uh, hopefully I, I'm sure I'll, if nothing else, I'll see you guys at ICAST, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I hope you have a great birthday. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Take care, guys. You got it. So, you know, what a great show. Uh, what great guys. Um, I mean, that was that was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I hope you uh, you did as well. Um, that kind of wraps it up for the day. So, you know, remember, if you're going out on the water, always wear your PFD and keep your paddle right side up. Take care. Well, I hope you learned as much as I did from uh, Billy and EJ about this great product. And I hope you'll consider supporting them because they're a small company that helps put on our show. Uh, if you want to see their gear, you can find them at Nakwa.com. So again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.